Hi guys, welcome to another episode here on Protopilot. My name is Darren and today we're going to be building this popular design pattern for this, this card that scrolls off from the bottom of the screen and turns into some kind of view. And you'll see this used quite a lot within Maps apps, um, specifically your Google Maps and Apple Maps. And there seems to be some interest in the community about how you might go about doing this. So I'm going to show you one way of doing it. And it will mean that it's not exactly one to one to the, the behavior and how it works. And I'll explain what I mean by that as we as we go through. OK, so let me just give you a quick demo of of how it how it's working here. So let me just hide off this. Um, the main the main protopi and we can just look at the preview window so i've got my my card just peeking from the bottom of the screen here and what normally happens is you can then drag it or swipe it up to to get to the to the main view so we're going to do that so we're going to swipe it up okay so it's now swiped up and and within it it's got this scroll view so i can now scroll the content i can see you know where's the nearest place to get a really nice pie because pies are really important and you know one of the one of my favorite foods um, so I can see that and then I can I can then kind of drag it back down and you can see that if I drag it now I can drag it back down all the way to the bottom and it's going to go into its into its kind of original position and you saw just a minute ago there that it kind of like moved back up again so we've got this idea of this hump so it's a bit like the way paging works that if you don't move it completely to the right position it's going to snap back so this is true of how this is working as well so if I just drag this up a little way and let go it's going to snap back if I drag it up past what I've kind of set as the center point then it's going to snap into position into its top position and the same thing is true of when I'm scrolling, so I'm going to scroll scroll down, and when I get to the top of the scroll view, I can start to drag it. But if I don't drag it far enough, it's just going to snap back to its original position. So I have to drag it all the way down to get it into its center position. And we've also got um, a swipe gesture on this, so we can kind of swipe it up and swipe it down like that. That works as well. Now, the thing, the reason why it's not exactly a one to one mapping of the real interaction that you'd see when it, see in a real app is because of this. So if I if I bring it back up again and I've got my scroll view, so I'm scrolling and what what we, you'd normally be able to do in a real app is you would scroll. And as soon as that scroll hits the top of the scroll view, it's now going to start dragging the whole card down. You can see that mine doesn't do that. And the reason for that is I have to literally let go. And now if I scroll, you can see I'm now scrolling the card. And the reason for that is the way Protopie works, what, what triggers and responses Protopie gives us. And there's, there's a bit of an issue in the way triggers work. So if you've, if you've got a trigger engaged, and in this scenario, I've got this scroll view engaged so I've, I've got my finger down on my mouse and I'm, I'm effectively engaged in that interaction that scroll view interaction I can't now supplant that with another trigger so another touch event so I can't just say hey switch from that to a drag that's not the way protopi works so we have to do a little bit of trickery to to get us as close as we can to the way the real interaction works and what we have to do is we effectively have to let go of the scroll view and then as long as we're at the top of the, the scroll view is at the top of the, the top of its um, position so at zero point we can now engage the second touch event which is the drag okay so there's a slight caveat there to how it works um, I am working on a more advanced tutorial to try and get around this um, and if I succeed then I'll definitely post it and keep you up to down up to date on that but I think like when you're using this in your designs, when you're testing, I think it's a very minor thing. I think most people will probably kind of scroll and then, oh, you know, maybe maybe you half notice that it hasn't worked and then try again and then it works. So um, I think we'll probably kind of get away with it. And of course, this is prototyping. So, you know, it's all about 
just trying to get as close as we can without um, expelling too much effort. This is not about building real apps. Okay, so with that um, little caveat um, applied to this tutorial, um, we're gonna go ahead, get on into this tutorial and start to build out this feature. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do to create um, this this interaction is, is to create the dragging the card up behavior. So we're going to come over to the triggers panel and we're going to add a drag trigger. And within this drag trigger, we're going to select this scroll block object. So the scroll block object is what we're going to use as our, as our touch point. And we need to have this other object within our group because we need to block effectively the scroll view. So there's no way, there's no response within Protopy to enable you to turn off a scroll view to make a scroll not scrollable. So we need to block it with another object. And we do that with this rectangle, which we keep, make sure the opacity is at 100, but we just set the fill to zero. So this will effectively will make it transparent, but it will still effectively get in the way and block that scroll view from scrolling. Okay, so coming back to our drag trigger, we're going to target the scroll block layer. And within this drag trigger, we're going to add a move response. So we want to move the card, so the card group. So we're going to use the scroll block as our, as our hit state, as our touch point, but it's actually going to move the whole card. Okay, so we're going to move the card and we're going to move it only on the Y axis. So vertically up and down. And we're also going to add a limit. We're going to add a custom limit because we only want this card to scroll between two preset points. And the, the range is going to be 100 on the Y um, to 565 on the X. And that's just a range that I've predefined for my design. Okay, next up, we want the card to have that paging type behavior. If we don't drag far enough, it will bounce back to the starting position, but dragging past a certain point will put it into a defined set position, the position that we want for our design. Okay, so what we're gonna to do to do that is gonna add a touch up trigger. And we're gonna make sure the card is targeted. And we're going to add to this a condition. And the condition is going to also target the card and it's going to specifically target the card's Y value. Because again, we remember we want to see, we want to know a um, particular position on the vertical. And we want to see when this Y position is greater to or equal to 356. And 356 is just the, the center value, so the center of my screen, the, the point at which I'm deciding which way the card's going to go when, when I let go of the mouse, okay? So to this condition, we're gonna add a move response. And this move response is gonna move the card to 556. And 556 is the lower, um, position it's the position that we're starting in so this condition is basically handling if we drag up but don't quite make the middle it's going to drop back down again okay okay so that's the first condition we actually can just duplicate this whole condition to make our second one and this one's going to deal with after we've got past the center point okay so so this time we want to see if the if the condition if the particular value is less than less than our value. Remembering that your your Y scale starts at zero in the top left hand corner and goes to a higher value as you go down. Okay, so that's why we're looking for a value that's less than. And we're going to change the move. Sorry, we're going to, yeah, just, just, to, just to mention, we're, we're looking for the same value, obviously, that's our center point value. And we're gonna change the move to 100. Okay, so on touch up, we're gonna hit a condition that says, if the condition is greater or equal to that center position, it's going to move to the lower position. Okay, so that's if we don't make it past and then, 
The second condition is going to handle if we get past that center position, um, we're looking for a value that's less than that because zero's up here. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Let's come over here and give it a test. So if I drag my card, and if I don't drag far enough, it's going to just drop back down again. But if I drag it past our center position, it's going to move into the top position. Okay, so that's the first part of our prototype built. Next up, we're going to add the, the ability to swipe up. So effectively, if you want to do a quick swipe and it also get into, into those positions. Okay, so let's create this interaction where we can effectively swipe the card up and it's going to slot into the correct position. So to do this, we're going to add a trigger called fling. So this will be triggered if you've got a bit more speed on your on your swiping, it's going to it's going to kick in. And to this fling, we're going to we're going to add the scroll back as the target because that's what we're we're dragging on to to move the card. And this first one, we want to set the direction to up. So if we are flinging upwards, and to this, we're going to add a move response, and we're going to target our card group, and we're going to move it to. 100 okay so that's our top position so 100 from the top and we're also again we're going to change our easing curve to ease out it'll just make it feel a little bit more natural and we're going to duplicate this whole this whole fling so we can do the reverse so if i fling down okay so i'm going to change the direction to downwards and we're going to come into the move response and we're going to change our value to 556. Five, okay, so let's give that a test. So I'm going to fling up and you can see that my card goes into the up position. And if I fling down, my card goes into the fling down position. So that's that's that bit all done cool so we're going to now move on to building the scrolling of the list okay so at the moment we can't scroll the list and this is because the scroll block is in the way so we need to now give access to the scroll view once the card is in place okay so to do that we're going to come over to our triggers panel and we're going to add a detect trigger and we're going to target the card the card group and we're going to target its Y property. Okay, within this, we're going to add a condition. And we're going to look at the card's Y property in this condition. And we want to see when it's equal to 100. Okay. Um, if it is equal to 100, we're going to add an opacity response. We're going to target the scroll block layer and we're going to set its opacity to zero. So effectively we're going to we're going to turn off that that scroll block's ability to block the, the scroll view. And we want to do this immediately, so it's going to set the duration to zero. Okay, so we're going to duplicate this condition so we so we can handle for the other scenario. So just Apple D, Command D, or Control D on a Mac. And we're going to change the condition operator inside of here to not equal. So this equal sign with a cross through it. And we're going to leave the same value. So we're just going to look for the river, the inverse. So if it's not equal 100, it must be something else. And if it's something else, then it needs to be blocked. So we're going to come to our opacity within this condition and we're going to set it to 100. Okay, so let's come over and give that a test. So we're going to scroll into our top position and now we're in the top position that effect, that um, scroll block has been, been removed so we can now scroll our list. Okay, so 
that completes this part of the the prototype and in the final part we're going to deal with dragging the card down okay so at the moment we can't drag the card down as we have the scroll engaged we also can't add a drag to the scroll as drag is a trigger and they're not responsive so you can't programmatically add them so to achieve this we have to bring the scroll block layer back into play as that already has the drag trigger applied to it okay so what we're going to do is we're going to come over and add a detect trigger and we're going to target scroll view so our scroll view layer and we want the scroll property and within this detect trigger we're going to add a condition and just making sure you've got the scroll view targeted we're going to choose again we're going to choose the scroll property and we want to look for when the scroll property is less than or equal so that's the back arrow with the little line underneath it to zero so basically when the scroll list is back into its into its zero scroll position the top of the list effectively okay so that's looking good okay next up we want so within this condition we want to add an opacity response And we want to target the scroll block and we want to effectively want to re-engage this so we want to bring it back up to 100 and we want to again do this immediately so it's going to set the duration to zero okay so let's double check this is all correct okay that should be it so let's come over to our preview window and give that a test so we're going to scroll up scroll up far enough we're going to then be able to scroll our list and then when we scroll back up the list and we get to the zero position we can now drag the card back down there you go Okay, so that completes our scrolling drag interaction. It's pretty close to the real thing, even if it's not perfect. Now, as I said, mentioned previously, there is potentially a way to match the pattern exactly, um, but it's, it's probably going to be a bit more advanced and it's probably something I'm going to make the subject of a future video. But this certainly should get you most of the way there and like I said previously I don't think a lot of people are really going to notice that little that little missing part um, people tend to spam their their screen especially in usability testing sessions and such um, and you should you should effectively get away with it hopefully okay so I hope you liked the video if you did please hit the old like button for me and hopefully I'll see you on the channel with a new video next time. Take it easy.